Um, I have these printouts. I'm just going to put them here on the table in case you all tomorrow morning would like to read the Christmas story with your family. Uh, this is just in order. It goes through the first part of Luke, the first part of Matthew, goes back to Luke, kind of goes back and forth, does it in chronological order. Perfect. And so it's printed out in the ESV. If you want to use your own translation, you can just use the same references and read out of whatever translation you would like to. But we have these okay. here. So I'm going to put them here at the end of the table okay. and just grab them. Good Christmas morning tradition. Uh, all right, let me pray and we'll get that for this morning. Jesus, we pray over our time this morning. Thank you as we just get closer and closer to Christmas that we um, remember um, um, that it's all about you and that we remember why you came. Uh, please help us to spend this morning just focused in on you and you alone. our families, to give us a time of rest, and to refocus our attention and um, admiration to you. In our prayer, amen. 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 All right, uh, we are in the last week uh, of our Advent series. So the Advent season is the uh, four weeks leading up to Christmas. A lot of years it starts at the end of November, but because of the way Christmas fell this year, it actually started the first Sunday of December and went to this week. Uh, today is the fourth week of Advent. This tomorrow's Christmas. So <coughs> today is the last Advent? Yes, the Teaching. four weeks of Advent, yes. Uh, today Jesus. is the last one. Um, Love. And Love. so, yes. Uh, you know, our, our actual time in, in the service, we're going to talk about uh, Matthew and Jesus being Emmanuel, God with us, talk about that today. Next week, we're going to continue on talk about the wise men. Because, like some Christian music radio stations and stuff, will stop playing Christmas music December 26th. You know, shops yeah, will. They start October 1st. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that, yes. When they're there, I'm ready. Uh -huh. Shops, you know, you know, their decorations they'll take down, the, everything for sale, they'll mark 50, 75% off, whatever it is. But really... The Christmas season isn't supposed to officially end for another... Oh, the wise men came there. Absolutely. Days. So the 12 days of Christmas, you know, is actually from Christmas to what, what some call the Epiphany. Um, and, and so even next week, we'll continue on the Christmas story in our service. We'll talk about the wise men then who came after the birth of Jesus. Uh, we'll talk about that next week. So we'll still be doing Christmassy things here at the church for another week, but our Advent series ends today. Okay, so we had the four weeks of Advent. There was hope, peace, joy, and love. Those are the four main themes of Christmas or of Advent, and today we're on the final one, love. Uh, the first one, just to recap, we talked about hope on the third. Isaiah 9, 2, 6 through 7. Uh, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of his peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice, with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. There is hope in uh, the coming Messiah. God's people, especially throughout the book of Isaiah, were in the midst of uh, turmoil and were going to face even more when they went to exile, but that they were not without hope. Okay, the second week, we talked about peace. There was a hope of Christmas, there was a peace in Christmas. Luke 2, 8 through 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, 
Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you in this day, for unto you this day is to David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. That is the announcement of the angels. Uh, Christmas brings us peace. <coughs> the way we experience peace, we, had, we talk about three main ways. Peace with God, peace within ourselves, and peace among mankind. Uh, peace with God, Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He reconciles us to God. He gives us peace with God. Uh, peace within. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send me in my name, he will teach you these things and bring to your remembrance <coughs> all I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. God has given us peace uh, in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. And then peace with one another. For he himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace. Who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. We have peace with one another through Jesus. So, first week was hope. Second week was peace. Third week, uh, joy. Last week, we talked about joy of Christmas. Luke 1, but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You shall call his name John, and you will have a joy, joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. John, as the forerunner before Jesus, announcing Jesus and um, preparing the way to bring joy to the people. Then John 15, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. True joy in Christ is found in following his commandments. It is not a long list of rules to prove that you are a good follower. Jesus has given us many commandments, but they are for our joy. Okay, I think those are the past three weeks. Oh, one more. John 16. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, you will see me. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. So we see the joy in Jesus coming down through the promises of faith. So we've seen throughout Christmas hope, um, peace, and joy. Okay, and today, this is the last week of the Advent, the fourth week leading up to Christmas. This week's theme, uh, the 24th, is love. So going back to Lamentations, Lamentations 3, for the Lord will no, uh, let me do not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart or grieve the children of men. So the love of Christmas, first and foremost, comes from God because of his love for us for his love for his people that is why he has compassion on us compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love people will grieve for a while but it will not last forever and 
John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, should have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This isn't traditionally a Christmas verse. You know, we talk about John 3, 16 at Christmas. <coughs> but what does this tell us about Jesus coming to the world? Both 16 and 17 speak to it, I think. I mean, just the sacrificial love. Well, right, we have his love, and... Uh, um, he loved and, us so much and so many times. Yes, he sent his son. So we, we, we oftentimes think of Christmas as, <coughs> you know, uh, Jesus coming down, Jesus being a baby, we talk about the shepherds, we talk about the wise men, we talk about these kind of events, but in 16 we say he gave his only son, God sent him, and that's reiterated in 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is why he was sent. This is what Christmas is for. He was sent for this purpose. He was sent that whoever believed in him should not perish out of eternal life. He was sent not to condemn the world, uh, but to save the world. That is why he was sent. It was out of God's love. So we typically don't think of John 3, 16 and 17 as Christmas verses. But this is very much the reason Jesus, the reason for Christmas altogether. The reason why Jesus came, the reason why the Father sent him, was out of God's love. Okay, first John. Uh, chapter four, verse seven through ten. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is <coughs> in this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. All right, that's a lot. Let's break it down. Uh, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. So, we are called to do what? Love each other. Love each other. Yes. And what is our love evident of? What does it attest to? What does it prove? God's love. Yeah. Whoever loves has been born of God. It proves how amazing we are for, for loving other people, how, how our moral excellence in us. Strike one. Ring <laughs> <laughs> in a miss. Three strikes, you're out. Exactly. Keep in mind with the gosh, it's like that moral excellence. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Moral. At least the rain has died down, so when I kick you out in a minute, it won't be so oh, bad. There's the patio. <laughs> there you go. Yes. You can um, use my big umbrella. <laughs> All right. So, good try, but that was that was a win. Okay. So, whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Yes. You are called to love one another. What that love then proves, not how awesome I am, but it proves whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Your love points to him. Your love is evidence of what he has done in you. Yeah, because um, also it's the constant forgiveness. You know. How many times should I forgive love. my brother? 
Seven times? Seven. Seven's a lot, right? Too much. Well, many people would think that's too much. <laughs> but. Never too much. Jesus yes. said no. Seventy times seven. Absolutely. That is not. That is not a normal thing inside of us. That kind of forgiveness, that kind of love. What I want, my personal selfish heart, someone wrongs me, I want to pay them back. That is what my evil selfish heart desires. But vengeance is of the Lord. It is not mine. My, what my responsibility is to do is to love. And that points to my saving faith. Uh, verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Now, that, those are three words we hear quite often from people who like to uh, antagonize Christians. <laughs> those last three words. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. People will quote those three words. They will get their sharpie and block out everything else around it. But they will keep those three words. God is love. So therefore, you know, you, you, know you, you have to be nice to me. Therefore, you have to, people will use that against Christians. And they forget it works both, both ways. Yes. But they also have a perverse view of love. You know, there are people who say, well, I can marry whoever I want to. Love is love. God is love. They are themselves dictating what love means. This verse specifically does quite the opposite. Let us love one another, for love is from God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God is love. Anyone of uh, love is from God. God gets to dictate the terms of what love is. So you're saying some people disregard the divine institution of marriage? Yeah, yeah. Well, right, because they will say, you know, they they themselves will redefine what the word love means, and then they'll say God is love. They'll use their definition, not God's. But the actual verses this comes from say God determines what love is. You don't get to. So yes, just like love should not be between a man and a man, <coughs> love also should not be other things that are anti-biblical too. I am a married man. I love any other woman, like I'm supposed to love my wife, that is also just as sinful. You can't say, well, God is love. Love is love. I should be able to love whoever I want to. That goes against what scripture tells us because God himself gets to dictate what love is. So anything else is a perversion, but people are quick to quote those three words but have no idea what context they are in. Uh, verse 9. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, the love of God was made manifest among us. God loves us. That love became manifest. That love became the person Jesus Christ. That is reason for Christmas. It is because of God's love. The love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his only son into the world. God is love. His love was shown to us in this. The reason for Christmas is God's love. Verse 10. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. Those are two dollar words today. <laughs> what does the word propitiation mean? Absolutely. Good job. So it says at the very end, he is the propitiation for our sins. He took the place for our sins. He's a substitute. Uh, he bore them on our behalf. So 
so. And this is love. Not that we have loved God. Christmas is a time we should be loving one another, as we've been commanded. It said, verse 7, let's love one another. We are to love each other. We're commanded to love one another. We're commanded to love God. But Christmas is rooted not in that we love God, but that he loves us. Because that order matters. People argue about the order of things, like chicken and the egg, right? You can debate that all you want to, which came first. Um, it's a chicken, but yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but besides that point, the question is, you know, uh, is it that we loved God, and so therefore he sent Jesus as a Savior to us, or did he send Jesus as a Savior to us, and then we loved him? Which came first? Our love for God, and he responds with a Savior, or a Savior, and then because of the Savior, we now love God. That one. That one. <laughs> Any other thoughts? While we were still enemies with him, you know, enemies to him, he sent Christ on our behalf. You know, we were still very sinful. We were not deserving of a savior, but out of God's love, he sent him. This is not a chicken and the egg. This is very clearly which happened first. Uh, God loved us, not because we loved him, uh, but he loved us and sent a savior. And we're able to love him because of that. All right. John 15. Greater love has no one than this that someone laid down his life for his friends. This is how one shows love. Yeah. Uh, this is exactly what Jesus did for us. He laid down his life on our behalf. And sometimes you might be willing to die for a good man, but we were enemies with God at the time. Still loved us so much that he laid down his life for us so we can be reconciled with God. So, this is what love is. This is why the Father has sent him. This is the reason for Christmas for the love of God shown manifest through Christ and that he loves us by taking our place for us. I didn't realize someone was. Right, um, it might be a masculine. I, I I don't know what the Greek is, but is yeah, that, so, so, that kind of mean like anybody could do it. Yeah, uh, 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 um, well, right. That, uh, that, yeah, that, that a man lay. A lot of times, this greater love is no man than this that he laid down his life for his friends. Um, uh, that's what some of the translations say, and so it might be masculine in itself. But well, this is true of more than just Jesus. It's pointing to the love of Jesus and what's going to happen. Um, it is true that there's really no better way I can show my love for someone than willing to lay down my life right. to save theirs. That is a very big action of love uh, that I could do. But that is an action that Jesus Christ will do. Yeah, in my Bible, it's, it, it's uh, masculine instead of right. someone. That's right. weird. Mine is actually, we have the same translation, but mine is gender neutral. What, what translation is it? We both have CSB. Okay. Yep, no one has greater love than this than, than to lay down his life for his friends. Yeah, it might be masculine, but it's but it's still this is true of anybody. This is the way yeah. one can show right. love. But Jesus Christ did it above and beyond. Yeah. Romans five. But God showed shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We weren't deserving of, you know, it, it wasn't that we were so awesome that God had to, they just had to die for us. It wasn't because how great we were. We were still sinners. We were enemies with God. But God chose his love for us anyway. And Christ died for us. Like a rose trampled on the ground. Bottom. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's a good song.
song is very catchy, we but that song puts the focus on the man, that he thought of me above all. Well, he's showing his love for us, mm -hmm. but it's not because of who I am. It's not because I'm so great, I then deserve Christ to die for me. I was quite the opposite of great. No, but it was pretty cool. I mean, God created this. Absolutely. Ah. That is true. We are the image of God. As long as the ego don't take care. We are his image. And uh, we are valuable. Okay. Uh, Matthew 22. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Um, okay, so the Pharisees heard Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. So, anyone know who the Pharisees and Sadducees are? Religious yeah. leaders? They were the two main religious sects in, uh, in Jerusalem. Absolutely. Uh, um, there were some differences in the two. The Sadducees were more were more worried about political power and control. The Sadducees actually uh, kind of reject certain teachings <laughs> like resurrection. the resurrection. Absolutely, they reject that. Um, but they were more cons they were more concerned with power than they were with truth. The Pharisees were more concerned about. Uh, doing the right thing in that, being able to say, I've done this checklist, look Legal. at what I've accomplished. Legal. Yeah, yeah, their, their personal righteousness. I've earned this. Look at what I deserve. I deserve God to be happy with me. And and so these are the two main groups. Um, They're Sadducees. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The Sadducees. But Sadducees. the Sadducees also have come to Jesus and they've tried to trick him. You remember that story about, okay, a woman marries a man. Mm -hmm. The man dies, so she marries his brother. The brother dies. Marries all the way down to all seven brothers. Then in, in heaven, Who is each other? Yes, they're trying to prove there can't be such a thing as heaven. Because either way, she's either a polygamist, and she's with all of them, or something is not right. And so they're trying to disprove heaven. And Jesus silences them. He puts them in their place. So then the Pharisees, they gather together. They're not gathering together to pray, to do the right thing. They're gathering together to scheme. They're trying to trap him. Absolutely. One of them, a lawyer. Like, oh, that's good. You know, you know, he's he's a well-established, good, you know, model citizen. No, he's a lawyer. And well, I mean, a lawyer is a fine profession. You know, we need lawyers. What do people usually think of when they think of lawyers? Sharks. Even today. What? Money? I always said you need two of them. One good one and one shy. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are one able... One one they are sly. They're able they're to they're talk one. their way out of anything. They're able to trap mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. You know, you know I, I like to watch lawyer TV shows. And, and, and to see them, Perry you know, Mason. exactly, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, you, you have all these guys, and then they talk to you like like you're they're, you're their best friend, right? They're having a conversation with you. Then all of a sudden, you say something, and they pounce, right? And so that's what they're doing here. They're just like, oh, hey, teacher, teacher, which is the greatest commandment? So we have these ten commandments. Which one's the best? And they're just talking to you. You know, having a nice conversation, and they're waiting for Jesus to mess up. And they're going to pounce. That's what they're doing. They're trying to trap him. So they ask him a question. And they say, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And they think, you know what? No matter what he says, we're going to get him. Because they say, oh, then you don't think these commandments are important? Oh, you think this one's important? What about that one? 
you know, and, and so they're trying to get him. Well, what did Jesus answer? He gives them, what is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Absolutely. The, um, the first greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. Second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So he gives them two commandments. Now, on the, um, what did God on Mount Sinai give to us? How many commandments did he give to us? Ten. ten. He gave us ten. Twenty-three. So, um, right, three. Question mark. <laughs> You're out. Um, so. I'm going to put the mute button on, on him the rest of the day. Okay. So, yes, we had ten. Jesus, try to say, only two really matter. Like, uh-oh. So does that mean Jesus is disregarding eight commandments? He means all the rest of the commandments are based on your first. Absolutely. We've got the... Every one of the ten commandments are like sub rules that fit within these. When I talk about do not murder, do not, Jesus didn't mention not, not to murder. So is murder okay now? No. No, why not? Because that's not loving your neighbor. Is it's it? not loving your neighbor. That's right. Absolutely. Covetousness. Uh, false idols. What about false idols? My neighbor doesn't mind if I have a false idol. Well, the, but, God but God does. But God does. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes. You Can you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, with, and also worship an idol? No. Absolutely not. Every one of the commandments falls within these two. And also, he even says all the law and prophets. So the way we talk about the Old Testament, you know, we, we talk about the Old Testament, we talk about all the different books in the Old Testament, right? We talk about, we, we can break it up into different sections. The way Jesus and the New Testament time period, which in the Old Testament, we talk about the Old Testament, they would break it up into three categories. There was the law, the prophets, and the writings. Okay? The law. What is the law of the Old Testament? Anyone know? What part of the Old Testament is considered the law? What? What? The, the first five books of the Bible. That is what, you know, you know so this is... The Torah. Yes, what, 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 yes what, what the Jews call the Torah is the law. Yes. And, and actually, an old... So a Jewish Old Testament is broken up in different order than what, what our Old Testament is. They have the law, they have the writings and the prophets. So the prophets and the writings. I don't remember which one's... Which one. But the laws together, just like we have, those first five books, they have those five books. Then they have, I think, the prophets next, which is what we consider the prophets, those books that we've been studying recently. Isaiah, uh, and then all those minor prophets, and Daniel, and Ezekiel, and then, yes, all those little ones were together. There's the law, there's the prophets, and then there's the writings. Things like Psalms and other... Things that don't fit within those prophets, um, uh, first and chronicles, first and second kings, those, and so, Ecclesiastes. so they actually have yes. What's Ecclesiastes? It'd be part of the writings. Poetry. Yeah, it, 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 it fall within the writings. So, so their Bible's actually broken up into three. In their Old Testament broken up into three main categories. He's saying two of them. Like, not only do the Ten Commandments all fit within these two things. Most of your Old Testament, he's saying, is summed up in these two things. All that happened in Genesis and on, all that happened in the prophets, stemmed out of these two things. Love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest commandment for us. Remember, we are able to do this, though, because... Of Jesus because of the love of God. It's stemming from him first and now we are able to do as he's commanded us.
Uh, Philippians 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. We don't typically talk about Philippians 2 at Christmas, but this is what Jesus has done. Verse 6, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in the human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. This is the point of Christmas. This is the reason for Christmas. So he followed his own commandment. Absolutely. He made the Asher stuff. Yes, sir. He was the perfect example of that. He's the perfect example of your neighbor. He's a perfect example of love as no greater man than this, and he laid down his life for his friend. He is the perfect example of those. He has emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So we're called then at the beginning to love each other. We're called to do, do nothing about selfish ambition. Consider others more uh, significant than yourself. We're called to do these things. Why? Because of who Christ Jesus is. Because we have one mind among ourselves, which is Christ. This is what he has done. He took the form of a servant. He was born like the men. He was found in human form. He came to us. We have Christmas. This is what he has done for this purpose. This is his love for us. This is why we are to love one another. He loved. Uh, he did not count equality with God thing to be grasped. Even he himself did both commands here. He loved God with all of his heart, soul, and mind, and even he loved us. He is fulfilling both of his great commandments in this one action of Christmas. So this is the point of Christmas. We have Christmas, we have love. Yes, we are called to love one another. But we're not saying, oh, it's Christmas time. You better show love to your little brother. And then, you know, December 26th, go right back to pulling your sister's hair and all that. You know, <laughs> you know that, 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 that's what people think of. Like, oh, you better behave. It's Christmas. But Christmas is a story of love. It is a command. It is a call for us to love one another, but because of the love of God. Shown to us. That concludes our four weeks study on the four weeks of the four weeks of Advent. We had uh, hope, peace, joy, and love. Uh, next week, we're going to start a study on First and Second Peter. Uh, we will soon. I think we'll, we'll probably do one book, or like one week, just to introduce them, like we had done before, uh, just to remind us, ourselves what First and Second Peter are. After that, we're probably going to go through like a book. We'll go through a study together. Spend a few months looking at uh, what first and second Peter is. And we'll start those those books next week. Great. Um, all right. Anything else before we break and pray and move on to? Uh, remember, if you'd like one, please grab uh, the Christmas story in order. We have those printed out here you to read with your family if you'd like to tomorrow morning and uh there still is probably apple cider in the back and all right let's pray just pray over our uh, study pray that as we just enjoy christmas as we spend this time with our family
spend this time to be able to pause for a moment um, that we remember why Christmas is here. We remember why it was that you came. Remember these truths through Christmas. Remember the love that it shows. Your love for us in sending your son. Uh, Christ's love for us in being able to, in being coming and lowering himself to the form of man being willing to come to die on our behalf. Remind us of the love that you have called us to with one another and what that you have shown us this Christmas. Share and pray. Amen.